few years ago, we started a new series at News 6 called Boomtown, dedicated to highlighting the pros and cons of Central Florida's growing population. Now, the heart of that growth is the city beautiful Orlando, and the man at the center of handling it, Mayor Buddy Dyer. Well, today, Dyer sat down with our anchor, Justin Warmoth, for an in-depth conversation on how his city is managing this growth and the challenges that come with it. Justin also took your questions to the mayor today. He joins us now with some of those answers. Justin? Absolutely, Matt. It was a wide-ranging conversation with the mayor, about 40 minutes from how the city plans to reduce the homeless population around downtown and Paramore to the lack of affordable housing options in the city and affordability in general, skyrocketing rents and home prices. And one question I asked was from you, a viewer, who feels that the mayor prioritizes businesses and tourists over the people who call Orlando home. What would you say to the, someone who, who feels that way, that you prioritize the businesses and the tourists over the residents who live here? I think each has its role. I mean, I don't want to shy away from saying we're trying to drive the economy and have business. If you don't have business in your community, you're not going to be a very good community. And in fact, we've been ranked number one in the country for best place to start a business for the last five years. And we're proud of that. But certainly um, taking care of our residents is uh, our primary concern as a city government. What do you think the biggest challenge Orlando is facing today? So I would say the issue related to both affordable housing and homelessness. Mm -hmm. And the issue relating to homelessness is exacerbated by the difficulties we have on the affordable housing market. We have 1,500 people that are moving to Central Florida, not just Orlando, but Central Florida basically every week. Mm -hmm. So that means it's put a lot of pressure on the housing stock that we have. We know rents have gone up. We know single family housing has gone up. The young married couple that then had a baby and wanted to move from their $250,000 starter home into something closer to, let's say, 400000 that house now costs 750000 or, or 800000 So you feel that at every level. Do you believe that Orlando is doing enough and do you feel like you're doing enough or what more can be done to get a hold on this affordability crisis specifically when it comes to housing? So there's a couple of aspects and we talked about it's pretty much at every level. Mm -hmm. So it's not just the affordable housing aspect, which there's a real deficit there. And I think on that aspect, the city's done a good job. Over the last five years, we have helped to create uh, over 3,100 uh, affordable units within the city of Orlando. The other end of the market, we're only going to solve by creating more housing. Does it surprise you about this rapid growth that we've experienced? In, in some ways it does, but in other ways, um, you've lived here your whole life. I've basically lived here my whole life. I was born here in Orlando. And you know what a great quality of life it is here in Orlando. And people are moving here for opportunity. What's interesting thing to me we were the number one, ranked number one for remote workers, which means there are more people that are living here and working remote, not just not in Orlando businesses, but working remote to a company that may be based in Atlanta or Dallas or, or somewhere else. And I don't know how I feel about that because in some sense, it speaks to the quality of life. In the other sense, they're not necessarily benefiting our economy because they're not filling jobs here in Orlando, but they are driving up housing costs. Right. They're using our roads, so they're contributing to all of the things that growth causes. I also asked the mayor if there's a tipping point when it comes to this growth, those 1,500 people are moving to Central Florida every week. Are we able to handle that sort of influx? He said the city has to think about density and specifically density around areas with easier access to public transportation like SunRail. He also jokingly said that he can't put a moratorium on people moving here, but added it's better to have people wanting to come to your community than leaving your community. Again, this was a 40 minute conversation. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be mm -hmm. sort of focused on the growth aspect for this portion of it, but we're working on getting that going and getting that online at clickorlando.com, the full conversation. Yeah. We're talking about a wide range the of The remote things. workers thing was fairly interesting. I don't know why they're all driving at rush hour times, it seems. That's a good but. point. Yeah. <laughs> it certainly is no surprise. We all love living in Central Makes Florida, sense. right? But that housing issue is a huge problem and it is affecting the entire region. No doubt. And it's yeah. all about, you know, the, the you know, he, I asked him about that, and he, I think you heard him talk about the supply being so low, mm -hmm. driving up 
prices, mm -hmm. but also, you know, you have these interest rates. So, it, you know, a lot of people lock those interest rates in at 3%, 4% back during the COVID times. Yeah. Now they're mm -hmm. up towards 8%. Yeah. Why would someone move? So there's not enough supply on the market. And these so prices, prices are sky high and people yeah. are still buying the homes. Exactly. Well, the ones so. moving here, it's cheap yeah. compared to New York, Good point. California, Justin Warmoth, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm.